Hey guys, Julian here from SynthwavePro.com. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. So in this sound design tutorial, we'll create a versatile patch, something suited for a variety of popular musical genres. Let's get started. All right, so let's get started. We're going to synthesize a preset. And I believe this is a very versatile preset, something you can use for, you know, hip hop, synth wave, um, you know, deep house, neo soul, it doesn't really matter. I know a few of you, that follow me happen to be uh, producers in different genres. So this preset uh, sound design uh, video will be very useful. So here's the preset in question. And in context. So you can use this preset for a variety of uh, musical genres. Here are a few examples. So now coming back to synth wave music, let's go ahead and um, see if we can recreate this sound. I am using um, Serum right over here. So if you are using another synth, do not worry about it. We're gonna design this from scratch. So if you're using another synth, you can follow along. Most of these parameters are pretty basic to most synths. So let's get started here. I'm just going to create another MIDI channel. This will be the one that we are going to um, create from scratch. In fact, I'll go ahead and call this a stab tutorial and let's go ahead and give ourselves a little more room. I'm going to color code this. Let's say purple. Take the MIDI data from the first clip here and go ahead and label this stab tutorial, stabs tutorial. And again, I am going to color code this the appropriate color. So let's go ahead and bring in uh, an instance of Serum. Now I'm really partial to Serum. And again, if you are using another synth, by all means, go ahead and grab yours. And so this is what it sounds like. Let me go ahead and lower the volume here. 
All right, so a very basic sawtooth here. If yours loads with another waveform because you may have configured it, uh, configured your init patch, then go ahead and click the default here, head on over to analog, make your way to basic shapes, and then here you can toggle and select this second option. This is essentially the same sound. This is a sawtooth again. Right, so now that we're on the same page, we kind of have a lot of work to do. This is what the original patch sounds like. And this is what we're working with. All right, so first things first, let's go ahead and um, bump up the voices here. And this will ultimately give us a thicker sound. I'm just gonna lower the detune here, but first let's hear what it sounds like before I go ahead and do this. All right, so it's extremely wide, a little too much detuning here. I'm just gonna scale this back. Sounds a little better. Maybe blend them in a little better. All right, that sounds pretty good to me. The next thing I wanna do is engage the filter here. Um, it's a little too buzzy right now, even though we wanna have it nice and bright. I'm just gonna reduce this a little so that we don't strain our ears a little too much. Let's go ahead and play this again. Cool, so fairly straightforward. The next thing I wanna do, just to get a bigger sound, right? I'm gonna head on over to Menu, Copy Oscillator A to B. So we're making a duplicate. Now this is in fact on, this is a, uh, a little glitch here. So if you find that yours also has the button disabled, once you uh, do that uh, copy from A to B, just go ahead and toggle this on, all right? The only difference with this one here is that the octave will be higher. So one octave higher, and you can see the unison is six. I'm just gonna lower this down to five. There we go. Let's hear what this sounds like, but first let's go ahead and send this oscillator B to our filter. All right, so I just click this here and now oscillator A and B are now filtering through this module. All right, very simple, just an octave higher than what we've already established. I'm just gonna lower this volume a little. I don't want this to be the same intensity, so let's go ahead and see if we can find uh, a pretty good volume for this oscillator B. We just sort of want to tuck this into the mix, right? So let's do some A B. All right, so far, so good. The next thing I wanna do is focus on this filter. Now it's set to a low pass filter. And in order to have those higher frequencies pop through, I'm just gonna change the um, slope to six. You can see that we have some options here. Low six, low 12, low 18, low 24. Now this is a six dB drop per octave as we sort of make our way outside of the cutoff. So everything beyond the cutoff point gets lowered by 6 dB. Now, if you want that to be a little more aggressive, in other words, if you want a darker sound, you'd go ahead and bump this up. In fact, let's go ahead and play this and, and see what those sounds like, those options. So this is 6 dBs per octave. Here's 12, much darker, 18. And of course, 24. So I'm just gonna drop this down to six as I want this to be relatively bright as we make our way through the preset. All right, so we're not quite done here with this filter module. One of the great features with this synth here is this ability to sort of drive the signal a little bit. Let me lower this a little. Let me exaggerate the drive control so you can hear what it's doing. All right, so it's thickening our sound. I don't want it that thick. Some really conservative values here. All 
All right, so I'm driving the signal a little. It's saturating it. I have the uh, drive here set to about 5%, and the fat control here is set to roughly 11, all right? So it doesn't have to be exact. If you are using another synth, you can always use some type of uh, built-in saturator or maybe even the stock saturator, okay? So we're gonna get more into that a little later in this tutorial, all right? So the next thing I wanna do here is lower that volume only because these two drive controls, the drive and the fat, well, it's boosting the volume. So I'm gonna click on this mix button right over here. In fact, let me give you guys some more real estate here. Now you can see a lot clearer and I'm going to lower the volume. Okay, we seem to be clipping as we're coming out. So I'm just gonna scale this back. All right, so far, so good. Let's listen to the original patch and see what else needs to be done. All right, looks like we have our work cut out for us. So let me just go ahead and bump up the volume here on the channel. Uh, the next thing I wanna do is focus on the LFO. Now, to get those stabbing sounds, we can actually do a few things. We can A, um, either write the chords down every, I guess, 16th notes, ta 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 But instead, we're gonna opt for, I guess, an easier way of doing this and we're gonna let the LFO work for us, right? So that's part of sound design. So let's go ahead and focus on LFO number one. I'm just gonna to toggle this to our cutoff here. And if you find that yours is doing something like this, which is set to bi-directional, just click on the shift and the options command while clicking on this, and then you'll have it set to unipolar or uh, unidirectional, okay? You can also do this in the matrix, just like this. So unidirectional, bidirectional, unidirectional, okay? So we wanna set it to unidirectional, and let me go ahead and lower the filter and hear what this is doing to the sound. Okay, the first thing we notice is that the rate isn't set correctly. So let's go ahead and bump up the rate as this is playing. That's eighth notes. Okay, that's 16th notes, right? Now let's play this in relation to our metronome here. So let me start it at the one and see if it syncs up. All right, so to me, it sounds a little sluggish, a little late. So let's go ahead and adjust the curve of our LFO. Much better. Cool, sounding pretty good. Let's make some adjustments with our filter and our LFO at the same time here. We're just gonna to toggle back and forth. Just gonna lower this a bit. And I'm going to bump up the envelope amount. All right, let's play our original. And let's play what we have so far. All right, so it sounds like we have some adjustments to make. Let's make this a little brighter. I'm gonna crank up my envelope amount here. So this is the envelope amount of our filter. What's happening here is that this blue ring that you see here, this would be the darkest point of the filter and this on the opposite side would be the brightest, okay? And the LFO is essentially starting right over here at this point you see at the top here of your screen, which represents this point, and then it's slowly ramping down to this point, and it's doing this whole bit back and forth, all right? So let's see if we can dial in the sound that's closer to what we're going for here. I'd like to lower this right over here rather than... All right, so that'll take up a lot of room in your mix. So let's go ahead and see if we can just tuck this in a little, make the sound uh, a lot tighter by adjusting the LFO slope. 
Cool, so let's listen really closely to what the original stab sounds like. All right, so one of the things we're hearing with our version, our stab tutorial preset, is that the attack is very aggressive, it's very upfront. So one thing we could try to do would be to uh, manipulate the envelope of our amp, which would be envelope number one. The problem with this is that only the first stab would actually take into consideration this delayed attack. So this is what it sounds like if I were to bump this up to, let's say about 300 milliseconds. All right, so that, that first hit is sort of nice and smooth and then the others are sort of jagged. So that's not gonna work. So let me set this back to where it was. I believe it was set to 0.5 milliseconds. And uh, we're gonna have to find another way of doing this. Now we can manipulate this um, LFO control here or the curve, but rather I like to manipulate this smooth control here. So let's go ahead and see what this sounds like as I crank up the smoothness. Much better. Ultra smooth. There we go. All right, so that sounds a whole lot smoother and less jagged. All right, so let's do some comparisons. Let's look at the original. And let's see what we have so far. With so many synthesizers out there on the market, it can become challenging and time consuming to learn all of them. Thankfully, with some very basic sound design skills, we can program the sounds in our head and apply them to our very own productions. All right, so we're not quite done with this sound. Let's see if we can enhance the sound even further. Let's turn our attention to this oscillator here titled the sub and let's bring this into our mix i'm going to route this to our filter by clicking the s here and uh, toggle the various waveforms here we have a sine we have triangle saw and a few squares here so let's play this now i'm going to crank up the volume so we can really hear what it's adding You can really hear it when it's set to a saw. And here's a square. Now let's do some AB. All right, so that sounds pretty good to me. I'm just gonna lower the volume. There we go. Do some AB. All right, so it's definitely contributing a little bit of warmth to the sound. I want oscillator A and B to be the star, and this oscillator sub here, they shouldn't really call it sub. I don't know why Steve Dudas assumed everyone would be using this as a sub. Some of us just want to use this as a third uh, oscillator, if you will, but anyways, I digress. Um, we're just using this to sort of beef up our sound a little, okay? The next thing we should do is probably add a little bit of noise. Not too much, but just to get that into this sound. So let's go ahead and engage our noise generator. This noise generator is a little different than the other oscillators. This one we'll be using to color the sound a little. We're gonna add some top end to it. So let's go ahead and select analog here and toggle to bright white, okay? So we're gonna introduce some basic white noise, nothing too crazy, but first let's go ahead and route it to our filter by clicking on the end here. Now I'm gonna boost this so we can hear what's going on. You should already be hearing that. Okay, so I'm gonna scale this back. Now I don't want too much of this. All right, so I'm gonna leave it at about, let's say 15, all right? I don't want this to be too prominent in the mix. Um, we will be adding a series of plugins that will contribute to the higher frequencies, all right? Now let's take a look at the original. And now let's take a listen to ours. 
All right, so it definitely doesn't sound as exciting as the original. So let's go ahead and work on it further. Let's go ahead and put this in its own group. And this is a good habit that uh, I've sort of developed over the years. I'm going to tether the cutoff, the resonance, the, um, let's see, the smooth control here for the LFO, as well as the level of our noise generator. And then I'm going to uh, assign these to Ableton macro controls, just like this. Nice and easy, nothing too crazy here. Let's go ahead and color code this. Now this will be something we are going to be automating later on, but for now, let's see what this sounds like. All right, let's see the original. All right, so still needs some work. Let's go ahead and brighten this guy a little. And what I wanna do is simply add a little more top end to our guy here. And of course, some resonance. All right, so the resonance will create this little bump at the point of the cutoff, and that's the sound we sort of want. All right, so let's process this further. Let's get rid of some of this low-end information here for our stab tutorial preset. can get rid of some of this mud in this area. Cool, let's keep going. Let's add a little bit of saturation. This time I'm going to select the overdrive. If you haven't checked out my tutorial, the last tutorial I had published was on saturation. If you wanna learn some more, go ahead and uh, check that out. I like to use this overdrive plugin and we got to be really mindful with this guy here. We're not going to crank it up too much. So let me start off at, let's say, baseline zero, and then I am going to bump it up by uh, one increment at a time. Hold down the shift and click the arrow up button. Now you should already hear that top-end white noise that's being introduced courtesy of this overdrive plugin. Let me exaggerate it so we can hear it. You can probably hear that by now. All right, so this is ridiculous. This is too much. Let me scale that back. Okay, so it's really subtle. Let's do some A-Bing. All right, so we're introducing a little bit of overdrive, a little bit of distortion to the signal. Now, we don't hear it too much when it's set to two, but that's because we are going to introduce the OTT. Now, this is a great little plugin. It's actually free. So let's go ahead and uh, bring this guy in. You can check this out at X for records if you're interested in this plugin. And I am going to lower the depth here a bit and slowly bump it up. So now we're getting that top end we are looking for, right? We didn't get it with the overdrive, but we're getting it with the OTT. All right, so let's compare it with the original. All right. All right, so let's bump this up a little. and bump up our volume. All right, so sounds like we're making some headroom, some progress. Now, obviously the EQing is a little different than the original, but we're gonna use our ears and uh, hope that this comes relatively close. All right, so we're scooping about 10 dBs here, somewhere around 200 Hertz somewhere around here, doesn't have to be exact.
Wrong unit. All right, so the next thing I want to do is bring in a simple compressor. Let's choose the stock compressor, slide it right after the OTT, and then uh, we're going to set some conservative values here. Let's say 4 to 1 ratio. Disable the makeup gain here and uh, just slowly bring down that threshold. We're actually going to close our eyes until we can hear that the sound has been sort of leveled, okay? We're looking for it to be a little even. You can hear that it's kind of working now. So one thing I've been doing lately is just relying on these uh, micro shifts in the sound and I'm using the, the keyboard here, the computer keyboard, and using the arrow down um, keys. And so I'm just lowering this until I can really hear there's a difference. I don't want to over compress this. May even alter the attack slightly. That seems to have made a big difference. And of course, reduce the knee. So this knee control here is often ignored. And what it does is that once the knee is set to low values, let's say one compared to six, um, once the signal exceeds the threshold, uh, our compressor is gonna chomp down on that signal a lot faster, which is what we want, right? So let's go ahead and play this. All right, so let's do some ABing here. I think we can use a little more compression. I'm just gonna lower this a little. Yeah. All right, so you can really hear that the compressor is not only leveling off the sound a little, but it's definitely attenuating some of those higher frequencies, especially the stuff in the 4K, the 10K, the 8K area. Let's pay attention one more time before moving on. Okay, so those higher frequencies jump out a little more. Okay, I'm actually gonna compress a little more. Cool. All right, so let's do some A being here with the original preset. Cool, so I think the only thing missing here would be the LFO. So let's bring in the LFO tool. And uh, this is, I believe, another free plugin courtesy of X for Records. I'm gonna set the smooth to one. This will help reduce those clicking sounds we often hear once we use this plugin and see if we can come up with some, you know, some settings here. Pretty good. I think the next thing is to send these guys out to some of our return channels. I believe the first one I have here is a, uh, a room and of course the second would be a delay. So let's go ahead and crank these guys up a little. Send some signal to our return channels. This would be the reverb, Valhalla. Do some A being here if I were to disable this. All right, now if we want to widen that sound, we can even go ahead and do that with this um, return channel. Here we're going to send some to the delays. Let's do our comparison to our first one here. Close enough.
I think our second one has a little too much uh, low end information and there's probably some difference with the uh, side chaining here. But again, this has a lot to do with your personal taste, but this is pretty much the preset sound that we've created. All right, so one of the cool things with this is, um, remember we had tethered the level of the noise here to this uh, parameter here. And so this is where this is really useful. Um, I'm gonna set this to the automation lane here. And as our guitar solo comes charging through, I'm actually gonna reduce the amount of white noise in our stab sound. So we're gonna go from a brighter sound and then once the guitar starts kicking in we're going to sort of darken the sound we can even low pass this even more so once the guitars kick in we're just going to come in here and with the filter cutoff selected we're going to reduce this okay so let's see what this sounds like All right, so this is gonna give room for our guitars to play and do its thing, all right? So let's go ahead and see what this sounds like, this whole transition here. Filter getting darker, white noise coming down. All right, easy peasy, we got it. That's it for this tutorial. If you found this valuable or useful, go ahead, give me a like, and if you haven't done so already, consider subscribing to the channel. That being said, stay safe, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.